J.T. Crowley is talking books. On this show, you'll hear from emerging talent and seasoned veterans from around the world. They'll give you their take on the writing process and how to create the secret sauce of page-turning deliciousness. Let's get into that magical mixture of the art and science of creativity. Here's J.T. Crowley, author of The Smart Kids and your podcast host. Good morning. I'm J.T. Crowley, and joining me this morning uh, to talk about her debut novel, Katie, A New Chapter, is Lisa Billingham from the West Midlands in the United Kingdom. The book and the main character, Katie, broadly speaking, partially reflects on her professional life and loosely touches on issues that have dominated her personal life. So let's welcome Lisa to the show. Lisa, welcome to Talking Books. Thank you, John. Pleasure to be here. You're welcome. Lisa, when I started to uh, read your book and to research not only your book, but a bit about yourself as well, uh, along with the other the several chats that we've had over the past few weeks, um, I kind of get the uh, view or the feeling, the sense that there's a touch of you in the main character, Katie. And, you know, and that there's the odd nod, the touch to what you've done in the past and what you do now. Because when I look at your profile, um, you're not only just an author, but you, um, you're a psychic medium, you're a spiritualist, you're a coach, and dare I say, a naturist. Yeah. <laughs> that always gets a laugh, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and why not? And why not? <laughs> we'll move on. <laughs> so you've done many different things in your life and you know what you're doing now is, is totally different to what you've done you know in the past. Do you want to talk about what you've done and why you're doing this at the moment? Yes. Um well why I was doing this or why I've done this at the moment is because of COVID really. Um it kind of threw a spanner in the works for everybody. Um, but I feel it put me on the right path because I was working in Fuerteventura as a holiday rep and then we had to fly home, we've got no choice. And I sat there and went, well, what should I do now? Yeah. So I decided to write my book and I'd been planning it in my head for about 12 months. I'd been on a course to see how to do it. And I'd already decided to write it as a novel because I didn't want the he said, she said rubbish that comes with an autobiography or anything self-help book so it's kind of all three really um but it draws a lot on my experiences and my battles with mental health hysterectomy so quite a lot that I've been through is actually in the book and will be in subsequent books as well but I came from the corporate world I've worked in bars restaurants retail you name it and corporate world for 16 and a half years and I I enjoyed very very little of it um, and then when I hit the brick wall I thought right the only way now is up and a decade's worth of self-help and realisation I suppose has got me to where I am now and with a published book so wow are you proud of that I am it's strange because it was written in um, 2020 and published in 2020 uh, because we couldn't go out. It's, it was never really celebrated properly. I went out for a um, coffee and cake with a friend a few months ago and it was like, do you know what? I haven't celebrated that. And she's like, right, let's celebrate now. We'll have another piece of cake and another coffee. I was like, okay, let's do it. Um. Sounds like a bit like beer in the coffee shop. You've got yes, yeah, that's what yeah, a Victoria sponge like. cake. <laughs> so let's you know, let's have a look at your book, and I want to start with your main character, Katie. Now she's a complex character, isn't she? Very. She comes with quite a lot of how shall I say psychological damage baggage. That's interesting. Um, you know, which has been rooted in her past. Um, hence the need for her counselling and her low esteem. In the story, um, she faces abuse, physical and mental, and of course talks about her hysterectomy. 
and all the complexities and the um, add-ons that go with that for the early onset of um, the menopause. Would you like to explain to the viewers, to the listeners, why you gave Katie these characteristics? I was trying to cram everything into the book, I think, when I first sat down and planned it and thought, what should I put into it? And it was a cathartic experience in writing it, and I was just writing everything, and I thought, I can't put all of this in, there's too much. Um, but the biggest things in my uh, life at that point were are in the book and was the hysterectomy and the battles with mental health because had I not recovered to a certain point from my mental health issues I wouldn't have been able to cope with the hysterectomy so it's all like the knock-on effect mm. um, and I got halfway through writing the book and she's got so much going on and I, I could have gone on even more and I thought no I've got to try and turn her life around in some way so that she starts to, to um, feel better. She starts to find herself. She starts to live a, a better life because I, I wanted the book to be inspirational. Um, and once I got to a certain point, I was like, oh, no, this isn't, this isn't, this isn't the way, you know, give me something positive to throw in here. So, um, but her characteristics are, in a way, very much me, although they're part me, part, you know, people I've seen on the street, it might be their hair colour or it might be a, a characteristic of, of a friend or family member that's just thrown into the mix. Um, and it's, she's a fictional character, but she carries a lot of me with her. Ah, and because a lot of writers do that, don't they? You know, to be an author, to be a writer, you've got to be, I, I think you've got to be a great observationist in life and, you know, people yeah. watch. That's what I do. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, yeah very much. Like people watching, is there? No, nothing, no. Yeah. Oh, did they do that? Did they just do that? Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're not talking to each other. They're not yeah. married. They're talking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The coffee shops. Coffee. They're out for the yeah. day. Yeah. We've... Yeah. Yeah, and they're both on their phones. All oh, that's that's about absolutely, yeah. <laughs> and you know, when when I when I look at the book, you know, Katie, a new chapter, um, you know, I see that the uh, you know the story is set over, if, if my maths is right, over twenty one a twenty one month period, um, and it's set in the early nineteen nineties, um, you know, from ninety one to ninety two. Yeah. So. Um, you know, I'm looking at the plot. Was that is it intentional that you set it then, and the way that you've set it up? It was kind of accidental in a lot of ways. Mm. I didn't want to set it in 2020 or in you know the, the few years previous to that. Um, and as I was thinking about the songs and the books, as the story took like took a hold of me I suppose and the characters started to do what they wanted to do um and I'm like oh that doesn't work then and oh that that didn't happen then and not mobile phones I didn't want her to have a mobile phone or a computer or she hasn't even got a television because I wanted it to be how people interact with other people and what you know what their thoughts and feelings were and I thought if you throw dare I say social media and computers and phones in the mix then it's a whole different story um so once i'd started to research the um era and the background almost of the other characters and what happens to them in this book it made sense to do it at that time it did change a while because it started first of all in 1990 and then different things didn't fit so i thought right 91 and then obviously it settled to start in march 1991 um, and then go through to December 92. When I first started it, I thought, oh no, it'll be like March to December. Uh, and then with different things that happened, I thought this has got to go out over a longer time frame. Mm. So it ended up being, like you say, March to March 91 to uh, December 92. Yeah, because it's important, isn't it? When you're writing in a certain period, you've got to get that period right. No yes. point in writing something and then said, oh, she got her mobile phone rang. Well, hang on, it's the 1970s. They didn't have them. 
and you're going to get caught out there. So yeah, you're absolutely right there. Okay. You know, as writers, we have to be careful about that. You know, when the story has been set in a certain period of time, we've got to reflect that period of time. You know, the dress style and things like that. But okay. there you go. That was interesting, oh. looking at the dress sense oh. as well. Absolutely. Like, what can I dress her in? Jeans and a t-shirt. It's a bit pants, isn't it? So I thought, <laughs> oh. So that was quite interesting. What did we wear in the 90s? And I think I must have like lost a great deal of the 90s. So no, I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you've put together, Lisa, an interesting web of characters uh, to tell this uh, interesting and intriguing story. Um, so you've got Jack, for example, the pub landlord, Sylvie, the bookstore owner, Vera, the cafe stop, stop shop owner, even. And of course, you've got John, Tom and Michael. Now, John is an interesting character. He's a teacher with an alcoholic and a violent past, which resurfaces in the book. Yeah. Because I think he's a guy that's struggling with his sexuality. Now, Tom is also an interesting character. And I think that all this womanizing he's doing is just to hide a hurtful relationship in the past. Yes. But spiteful Michael is, um, hmm. Well, <laughs> he's another character, another side to the book. Um, so would you like to tell the listeners, the viewers, how you um, interwove all these characters into this fabulous book of yours? Oh, thank you. It was... Um... Partly what you said about observation, when I started writing it, I started to observe things that were around me and because of the, the time it was written and we were very limited to what we could do and where we could go, I went for lots and lots of walks, different places just around me and I found some very weird things, so like, you know, the, the weather and um, all sorts of things and then I came across... Um, car burnt out car and I thought hmm. and I just made notes of everything that I saw and I probably got about 20 pages of A4 with just notes on squirrels and burnt everything and everything anything and everything that I actually saw and observed and then as I'm writing it I thought I've got to make this a bit more exciting for the other characters as well so it's not just that they're listening to her or they're helping her or they're observing what she's doing they've got things going on as well so that when I finished it, if people were interested in it and they bought into the characters, they'd want the next book. If they didn't, it'd be like, well, I don't care, so forget it. And I'll just, well, I won't do book two then. Um, and it was just from observations of things and people, and I'm like, oh, what can I put in there? And then all of a sudden, you've got a completely different angle when you just throw that one thing in there and think, okay, so what happens to him and why does he end up there? And I'd actually started writing all this into the first book and I thought, no, I need to tell their story separately and yeah. combine them all together, you know, so when they meet her, why they're feeling and thinking the way they do. Um, so it was just mainly observations of, of things and people and characters and personalities of people from the past and things like that. And just try to sort of almost throw it up in the air and see what comes out. Go, oh, yeah, OK, yeah, that's good. And then as time went on, it was just they were, they were writing themselves, really. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want you to do that. Well, I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what most authors do. Yeah. Um, your, your book, um, there's many layers uh, to this story, um, apart from Katie and all her issues. You've got John dealing with his demons from the past and to um, possibly, you know, hiding again about his true um, sexuality from people. Um, then you've got, as I says, you've got Tom and the hurtful relationship and all the womanizing to hide that and spite from Michael, a grudge. We you know that a grudge is interesting. I was thinking, oh, what's he got a grudge about? And, you know, and then the, it, you've got the attack on Jack. Now, I have to say, I was a little bit disappointed here because I'm a great crime reader. I love crime novels. And I'm thinking, when I looked at the story here about Jack and the burnt out car you just said, um, I wanted to know more. Who did it? You know, why did it happen? What's happened in the past to create this scene? Mm -hmm. And, you know, you know, 
what's going to happen here? Yeah. And I just thought, I'm going to ask her about this and say, so 